Okay, so in this chapter, what we'll be doing is showing you how to create an end cache for your end hair and go over some of the various options that you'll be using for your end hair. So first up, let me select Raven Hair, which we have right now, and then I'm going to go through a couple of these options, just briefly hint over them in our FX tab, of course. And then next up, we're going to go across to our end cache menu and go through a couple of these. Uh, so I'll just tear them off and let's begin. All right, so you have create new cache first up, which is for both end objects and Maya fluids. You have merge caches, which means you can take two caches and merge them. All right, for both end objects and Maya fluids, you have next up, which is replace cache for the very same thing, end objects and Maya fluids, which means you can take a existing cache and replace them. You have enable all caches unselected and disable all caches unselected. You have append to cache, which means you can add existing frames onto a cache that's already there. You have attach a cache onto a uh, end here that doesn't even have one. You have delete caches, obviously. So you can delete a cache from an end here. You have replace uh, cache frame, or in this case, frames. Let me open this up and show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see, there are various options in here that we will be covering in, in, in later chapters, as well as delete cache frame or frames, which also has options that we will be covering in later chapters. We also have paint cache weights too, so we'll go through that as well in later chapters, and transfer cache to input mesh. We have legacy cache for those of you who have used this before. We have create particle disk cache, edit over sampling, or cache settings, and memory caching, enable, disable, and delete. So there you have it. Those are the options that we'll be going through in later chapters. Now, let's get to creating an end cache. Now, first up, I don't use viewpoint viewport 2.0. I usually go to legacy, right? It at the end of the day, you really want to calculate your end here as fast as possible. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Uh, next up, let me just take a last look at this here just to make sure that everything's okay before we create our end cache. Looks fine. All right, next up, what I'll be doing is I'll turn off our highlight selected. So it's going to be just the end here that you're seeing right there that's highlighted in blue. And let's see, is there anything else I want to turn off? Hmm, I don't think so. I think those two should be fine. Uh, the next thing that I will most likely do is I will go to Shaded, which is, you know, five on your keyboard, for those of you who uh, are wondering. So it's just going to be the end hair, no textures visible. So it should calculate pretty fast. And let's, uh, let's begin. So... I'm going to go to create a new cache and I'm going to click on the option box and here as you can see there are some other options that we have in here so let's go through them you first up have oh wait let me just reset this I think that might be wise alright so you have cache directory first up which of course if you have a project uh, directory is going to go directly to that project folder as you can see I have one right there you have cache name, which of course gives you the option to name your caches. I'm going to just keep it as is, Raven Hair System. Uh, you have use cache name as a prefix. For this one, I won't, uh, but you have cache format. You have two different formats. You have MCX and MCC. In this case, I'm going to be using MCC. There we go. Uh, next up, we have file distribution. In this case, I'm going to use one file. I don't want to use one file per frame. That's going to be pretty large. So I'll stick with the one file. All right, cache range time. Uh, next up, uh, we have render settings, time slider, and start and end. It's entirely up to you. Uh, if you don't want to render the entire uh, time slider, you can add in, as you can see here, start to end. But I'm going to stick with the entire time slider. I actually want the entire time slider to uh, calculate. And of course, I want to evaluate every frame at one frame and save every one evaluations. All right, so 
The next step from here, of course, is to just uh, create. But before I do, I always like to take one last look at my file before I hit that create button. So I'm going to just do that for a little bit. Uh, let me just take a last look here. Everything seems fine. Uh, yeah, let's let's get to creating. So let me just press the create button. And there you go. If you look down at the time slider, you'll see that the time slider is beginning to move. And of course, the end hair is starting to calculate, as you can see right there. Once your end hair has finished calculating, it means that you can now scrub through your time slider without it giving you the message that there are too many frames to calculate. So at that point, I will leave it right there calculating. And in our next chapter, we will be going through all the attributes that we use for our character, May. So let's get started.